Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And after I'd had the time to literally expel literally a few hundred calories from my system and having put it back on again with drink, it's time that we resumed with another Chris Chan quickie article. And this time... Um, a sort of a, a divergent, uh, because we were talking all about Chris and his relations to sexuality before, we decided that what we're going to do is that, because there's like at, le at least a few other different articles, not just about transgenderism, but also about bisexuality and Chris's relations with gay men, well, with uh, male homosexuality, I guess you could say, I think it's only fair that we uh, we cracked this case once and for all, and to be honest... God almighty, you know, I, I have literally not had a proper drink for like three months and, um, God almighty, I completely forgot how good this was. <sighs> so, let us begin, shall we? This article is about Chris's opinions on homosexual men and women. For Chris's identity as a lesbian trans woman, see transgender... For Chris's bisexual identity, see bisexual. For a general overview, see Chris and sexuality. So, here we go. I am straight. Vaginas and boobies give me erections. You damn homos have never no chance with me, ever. Chris, also Chris. There was a time before I realised mine being a female soul trapped in a male-born body when I was homophobic. But I became better aware of these kind and open-hearted people, and learned how understanding and compassionate they are, and with that, losing the homophobia, I felt more at peace with myself and those around me. Also, Chris, I'm bisexual trans woman, and I lick pussy and suck cocks. Chris in 2020, flaunting his bisexuality. You know, you have to understand the fact that, first of all, what respectable woman is going to have their pussy licked by Chris? And what respectable man, straight or otherwise, would want their dick sucked by Chris? Questions, questions. Homos were the pejorative term by which Chris referred to gay people, almost invariably gay males. Nigh exclusively at the time of his discovery. He had also occasionally used phrases such as those of the wrong orientation because even saying the word homo or gay made him uncomfortable. Chris's formal ire for male homosexuals was confusing, since they, of all people, posed the least threat to his love quest, and seemed to be motivated entirely by his own sexual insecurities. From the very beginning of his internet fame in 2007, his extreme opposition to homosexuality and his neurotic obsessive demand that everyone stay straight had been one of his most noted and exploited aspects. Many interpreted his heteronormative crusade as a possible tell that he was repressing his sexuality in some fashion, which ended up being the case in the long run. Over the course of the 2010s, Chris gradually recanted previous homophobic statements, becoming accepting of gay people, before eventually identifying as a bisexual trans woman and proudly supporting what he called the SLGBTQ plus causes. Past homophobia. Yes, I am a homophobe. I fear them all, and I fear the tormenting temptations of falling off the straight path. But then I mentally, sometimes with DVD, and if you'll pardon the expression, shove some pussy in my face. I'll tell you what, if I ever stop, stoop down to changing my path, I might as well get a change in gender operation. I believe that this is what in the business they refer to as foreshadowing. Chris's homophobia apparently grew out of the complex strew of his noviophobia. His failure to achieve his love quest, his admiration for girly toys, his own gender confusion, his loathing of male bodies, and his autism. His terror was such that he was barely able to bring himself to even utter the word gay, or any other non-concerning gay people, except of course for the word homo. He struggled with intrusive homosexual thoughts, he said that he couldn't even look at a picture of a pickle without being freaked out. In Kill De Jack, which was a video, I didn't Chris upload that video on like Christmas Eve or something like that? 
Chris revealed he had to cover a section of his computer screen with a piece of paper so that he could browse the Wikipedia without looking at Jack Thaddeus's pro-gay advertisements. Nothing got Chris angrier than being mislabeled as a homo. Why Chris couldn't have just ignored it is a good question, but there you are. Chris was simply not afraid of becoming a homo himself. He hated all gay men. This animosity seemed to result primarily from his fear of them, and all men, and their supposed ability to desire to make him gay. He had often categorised the trolls, all of them, as homos, which is either a basic ad hominium attack, or a sincere belief that anyone who draws penises on Rose Chew must be gay. It also revealed a belief that all of his trolls are male, since Chris used homo exclusively to reference gay men. This notion is not only demonstrably false, but it is in fact completely delusional, since many of Chris's greatest trolls have been women, and Chris knows it. This exercise in selective memory likely stems from Chris's loathing of male jerks and inversely proportionally admiration of women. Notably, in an IRC chat from the 2nd of January 2009, Chris made the following statement. If I could have it my way, I'd make it illegal and forbidden to have homo men, women are safe. Also, I would have the secondary definition of the word gay, being homosexual, removed from the word in the dictionaries, and instinctions and saying of the word will only legally be used to mean the word happy, as it was originally intended among songs like Deck the Halls. Chris, 2nd of January 2009, 11:59 a.m. as it as it turns out very thank you for the timing chris further went on to propose a bizarre form of conversion therapy in which all gay men would be imprisoned and made to sleep with both female offenders and prostitutes against their will read basically rape yeah that well i don't well outside of that i don't know what else it could be thereby reprogramming them I wish that to God I was making this up, but no, this is, inter interestingly, a certain Herr Himmler had a similar idea, suggesting that pink triangle concentration camp prisons be forced to sleep with female camp prostitutes. They would be taken in and reprogrammed with multiple upon multiple pleasurable moments with female prison inmates and prosts. I... D Ignoring the fact that uh, I have, like, well, I have several objections to this. Well, many, to be honest, but there you are. That's just a, that's just how it is sometimes with Chris, is that anything that... Oh, who am I? Let's just move on. On the 30th of January 2010, Chris voiced his uh, uh, sagacious opinion about the ban on homosexuals serving openly in the American military. He advocated the lifting of the ban but only so that the homos can go die in explosions. Go to hell, Chris. The universe of Quickville also saw an anti-gay jihad. On the 5th of January 2010, Chris stated that Magic Chan keeps a constant psychic surveillance to ensure that there are no homos in Quickville. When evidence of homosexuality is found, the people involved are arrested and fined heavily. In Sonichu Issue 10, Chris's comic self travels into the future where scientists have successfully isolated the homo gene, an idea stolen from a Family Guy episode called Family Gay. They have not, however, isolated the straight gene, and are only able to when Chris donates his own blood. Chris has once remarked that homosexuality could be cured by injecting blood from straight men into homosexuals, despite the fact that if Chris ever tried to do that in real life, he's probably more at risk of injecting people with diabetes than trying to make them straight. Chris then brought back to the present enough of the cure to turn every gay person on Earth straight. Ironically, a vaccination traditionally consists of introducing a small amount of the disease into to a body to stimulate the immune system. So Chris unwittingly implied that his own blood contains the dreaded homovirus. That's kind of like almost hilarious when you really think about it because you could almost trace this all of this prejudice all of this homophobia all of this uh, hatred uh, vitriol remarks all down to the fact that really chris thinks he has just as much of any chance whatsoever of being like them and it all just comes down to the fact that chris is just 
intolerant, but didn't think to look this slight uh, in implication over. A classic case of Chris's homophobia surfaced in the struggle over advertisements on his Wikipedia. Jack Faddy has purchased ad space on the Wikipedia to put up two ads. One featured Peter Griffin, a family guy, pointing out that he had his creator, Seth MacFarlane, were supportive of gay rights, and other prompted Mexican tourism with a cartoon cactus that Chris mistook for a pickle. Chris, unsurprisingly, went berserk, stating, I understand you getting paid to run ads in the box on the Wikipedia. I feel okay with Vivian's audiobooks, but I feel offended with the Mexico contest and gay rights ads. The pickle on the Mexico ad reminds me of a terrible time in my past with pickle-suited trolls, and I am against homosexual lifestyles for straight heterosexuality. I don't... Wait a minute, hang on, Chris. Homosexual lifestyles and for straight... That, 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 they're not... That, they're not one and the same, Chris. That, 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 they're for different... That, moving on. In protest... Chris replaced Jack Faddis' gay-friendly ads with ads for Love in Action, an ex-gay ministry protect marriage.com site prompting Proposition 8, and a site calling for a boycott of Pepsi due to their gay friendliness to sum it up. In one fell swoop, Chris managed to put in three big things that would not win him any gay friends whatsoever. As with his fear of becoming a homo, the origins of Chris's deep homophobia are not clear. Certainly Bob had an influence, as the Matthew Noble call showed that he had some kind of deranged hatred and prejudice as his son on the 7th of January 2010, when answering the question on how he began hating the gay population, we got this interesting insight. I estimate that I started hating them about summer of 2003, after I started my sweetheart search, where I received the response from one woman, Ooh, I'm sorry, I am a lesbian. That combined with my past dislike of men in general, and the latter later picture images of such acts led me to disgust and hatred for the homosexuals. Plus all of the homos within the trolls and all homosexual fans with their wrongful quoting of my comics and characters in their papers and essays promoting homosexuality. And even worse, a solitary balloon in one of the goddamn pride parades. All of these factors have only made my view of the homosexual males worse. Chris before finally stating for the umpteenth time that Sonichu is straight. One or two comments are probably needed here is that, again, Chris's sweetheart search was only one day prompted by the fact that uh, one woman came up and just said that she was a lesbian and not interested in Chris. Why is that a man's fault? What ha is it the idea that Chris thinks that uh, men are so disgusting that it actually turned a woman gay? Is is that what the, that part was all about? But at the same time, again, what about people who did not did no wrong to Chris whatsoever who are gay? What did they do to upset him? Chris legitimately would get like get pissed off and aggravated at gay people for literally I don't know existing breathing just going about their business, not knowing who the hell Chris was and should be allowed to get on with it. That's something you have you kind of start to pick up on uh, very early on, is that Chris's uh, phobias, his prejudices, they're based on nothing. They are very, very hard to justify. There's no real justification actually whatsoever, the more you press it. And the fact that Chris doesn't really seem to understand why people have an issue with him for this. Which is something that actually, I think a lot of people who are homophobic uh, don't seem to grasp, is that they can't get around the idea about why people would be mad about them for this. If this is true, Chris made no reference to it at the time, restricting his hatred solely to the heterosexual uh, male jerks. It is certainly ironic, considering his most recent views on lesbianism, it also adds another interesting aspect to his hatred. Chris's frustration with homos is influenced by his childish and whiny about not getting his way with one woman who turned him down. He wouldn't expect anything different from him. He later expressed anxiety towards gays in his classic Future Message video released in February of 2007. Chris knows that his homophobia was unpopular with his fans, 
so why did he continue to be it? And he often tried to persuade the public that he respects homosexuals for who they are. Then what the hell was all this about then? However, we usually betrayed his sincere intolerance of different lifestyles soon afterward, often within the same statement. On the 18th of February 2009, for example, Chris issued one of his retractions of his previous homophobic remarks and declared that he respects the gay people, just as he respects his gal pals and his sweethearts. However, this was done at the insistence of Julie a mere month later, Chris was reciting verses from the Bible to once again preach against the vile homos. So, no, it's... It's it's dance, Chris, dance. Do as I say, or literally you're not going to get any China whatsoever. That's the... Chris doesn't actually be believe any of the things he's been told, and he doesn't actually do any of the things he's been told to do with any sincerity. He's only doing it just so that he can... Uh, be justified in getting what he wants. Which, yeah, and also, by the way, I'm going to have to censor this part out. Um, I'll explain what this is about in a second. On the 14th of June, 2009, Chris posted a music video called Don't Trust Any Homos Over There, which, in his tradition of ruining everything you ever loved, is a homophobic version of Uncle Ruckus's satirical song from the Boondocks. You probably know which one it is. Later on that same day, he published an apology for the video and insisted that he likes gays who accomplish other things like Stephen Fry, who was a homosexual, but you know, he did a good job being a narrator on Little Big Planet. Um, <sighs> Slight uh, rant, I just want to go on about this, is the fact that... um. I'm actually gonna. I'll tell you what. I'll do. I'll do it this way. I'm gonna open up the article on Stephen Fry just for one second. Um, I just want to say for the record, if you don't happen to know who Stephen Fry is, Stephen Fry is a very, very well. I'll just do a very brief hit because I, I get well. He's a very, very accomplished broadcaster, comedian, presenter, writer, and narrator, and. He became, uh, he was he was one of the, one and a half of Fry and Laurie alongside Hugh Laurie and through a lot of like British comedy then did thing. he was in Blackadder, he starred in uh, Jeeves and Worcester, he was in, he has served as president of the mental health charity Mind and bear in mind, he was, he, 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 he got, he got, he, uh, he, he was in the Oscar uh, Wilde film and he was nominated for Golden Globe Best Actor with uh, Inspector Thompson in Robert Altman's Murder Mystery of Gosford Park all the way back in 2001. And look at all the other films that he has to his name. Gosford Park, Love and Friendship, Chariots of Fire, A Fish Called Wanda, The Life and Death of Peter Sellers, V for Vendetta, Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows, and he also played the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland in its sequel, and other films as well, like uh, The Master of Lake Town in the Hobbit series of films. And he hosted the British Academy Film Awards 12 times. A and he was also uh, the presenter for QI for, what was it, 13 years or something like that? And, I, you, and again, I, I just want to, I know again, this it's probably it was probably lost on Chris to ever mention anything like this. But you, just just saying that uh, Stephen Fry was only notable for doing the voiceover for Little Big Planet, I feel in some way is incredibly disingenuous to Stephen Fry. Because Stephen Fry, uh, among other things, uh, I think was diagnosed with like severe uh, uh, bipolar disorder, and. Stephen Fry himself has been very, very public about uh, his uh, his bipolar disorder, and 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 I've heard a lot of the accounts about Stephen Fry as well, and, and when he said this, and he, it damn near brought a tear to my. In fact, it, it's kind of like making me upset to talk about it as well because anyone who knows anything at all about uh, bipolar disorder or what it's even like to live, um. Uh, affected by this, it can 
literally be the difference between never wanting to stop and literally just wanting to stay in bed for weeks. It can drive people to the brink of madness because of things like this. And uh, by the way, among other things that Chris di- uh, that uh, Stephen Fry did, he went and did a documentary. He-, he went all the way to Kenya to do a documentary about Africa's incredible uh, homophobic laws and how the death penalties were re- readily showcased to Stephen Fry. Stephen, and again, let me just emphasize that again. Stephen Fry, an openly gay man that the people of Kenya also knew at this point, he went all the way to Kenya and he was literally watching people be sentenced to prison for life or be openly execu- publicly executed for the simple cr- for the crime of being gay in Kenya. What I'm trying to convey through all of this, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that Stephen Fry is. Bolder, more talented, brighter, better educated, better learned, more sensitive, more accomplished, more loving, more caring, more sympathetic than Chris could ever hope to be. And don't think I'm using educated there to suggest that just because uh, Stephen Fry went to uh, went to went to a posh school, he was in uh, University Challenge outside of. He he was also he was a contestant on the University Challenge, and he all, he was also in University Challenge in that one episode of The Young Ones. But here's the thing: Stephen Fry could have just chosen not to have been a be- good, well educated. He could have chosen not to have met Hugh Laurie. He could have chose a lot of the things in his life. Chris, by the same token, chose this way, and this is, you reap what you sow, ladies and gentlemen. Which is why, no, I won't ever be forgiving of Chris's homophobia or for the fact that he clearly doesn't seem to understand, again, why people not only have an issue with him because of this, but for the very simple fact of the fact that Chris doesn't really mean it when he says say, he likes people like Stephen Fry because... He he just he, he he thinks that just because you're gay, that's that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if it doesn't affect you whatsoever. It's it's just for being gay is is enough to completely scorn uh, people in your mind. And I think Chris is just an absolute pig for saying stuff like that. And that's on. I don't care what Chris has to say. That's what people are going to see him as a decadent homophobic pig who literally will wallow in his own filth and is only concerned about getting whatever he wants because that's all that matters in the universe and you know what you know what you know what i feel like i ought to do i ought to feel like um i feel like this is the sort of thing almost like i don't know rosie o'donnell would probably say because rosie o'donnell outside of her incredible uh uh history of acting and uh what she stands up for and all the, everything else, I think she would make a much better uh, rant at trying to completely dismember Chris brick by brick because uh, Rosie O'Donnell is a lesbian herself and she has uh, kids as well with a wife and she's uh, Rosie O'Donnell is not exactly not unvocal about about calling out pigs like Chris and well. Actually, to be honest, I felt quite good after that. I, I was getting quite upset before about uh, the whole thing with Stephen Fry, but I felt like just getting all that out actually made me feel quite good about myself. To know that I'm not insane for calling out uh, Chris for all of this bullshit. Ah. <sighs> anyway, where were we? Chris, of course, was unaware of the various other career... Yeah, exactly. It seems that this apology was only posted in the first place for the sake of his gal pal Kim's boyfriend, whose gay brother apparently lost both his arms in Iraq. And, well, lost both his arms in Iraq, and this was before Chris said that he would not advocate uh, the bill just so that gay people can die in explosions. What an absolute fucking pig. In fact, you know what? It's not often I use this, but what a du- you know what what an absolute dirty piggish cunt Chris is. 
It's not often you have to hear me use the C word, because I legitimately will only ever break out the C word if I feel like it absolutely warrants it. But, there you are. That's just about the only cunt that Chris is ever going to get, is the word. That is all, that is the, the that is the some amount of cunt that Chris is ever going to get. It's the four, le four letters, and there you are, Chris. That is all you are, and that is all you're ever going to be. Congratulations. Disgusting cunt. On the 6th of August 2009, at a time when the trolls were getting the most uh, mileage out of baiting Chris regarding his sexual orientation, Chris posted a wide-ranging hate fueled rant on the Wikipedia, which he would hope uh, would clear up his misconceptions. His address to the homosexual subtitled, I am straight, not homo, not bi, straight, get it through your fixed goals, is a classic statement on the issue. Unfortunately, it had no noticeable effect on the trolling, the essay is in full. Oh, and by the way, in case you're wondering what I'm having to censor over here, is that one of the things that Chris apparently tried to do to rectify um, his uh, statement on being uh, straight is that he drew himself having sex with the three members of his uh, Guitar Hero band, even though, by all accounts, it looks as if uh, Chris is literally... Has literally caught, has literally sawed himself in half from the waist downwards, and they are all sitting on what looks like a, a pool of lava. So anyway, here's here's the statement, here's the essay in full. Good day. I write this essay with sound mind to address the major issues that has been bugging me constantly for the past few years: the pressure and stress from the homosexual population. What a great fucking start. First of all, as I have said over and over and over and over and over and over infinitive number of times, I, Christopher Christian Ricardo Western Chandler, am straight. No question or shadow of a doubt, ever. I personally respect the individual people as fellow human beings, and I am cool with associating with them as acquaintances and friends. But please do not wave around what you do behind closed doors around me. Nobody cares to know, I personally do not care to know, even within my imagination, I do not care to even have the pictures randomly pop in my head, every time of such pictures appear, I feel queasy and want to throw up. I humbly apologise for being offensive, but that is how I feel. As a human being, I have no hard feelings conversing and associating with the homosexuals at any time. Individually, they each have a right to their own opinions, perceptions, and peaceful lives. I fully understand and respect that. The only thing that really grinds my gears harshly is being wrongfully labelled as a homosexual when I am straight. I am aware of the way I stutter, spaced by words, and all that from the way I talk, but I assure you that I sometimes have trouble fully comprehending situations and statuses at first. It sometimes takes me a long while before I can fully comprehend and make an appropriate reaction. In another word, I am sometimes retarded. And the only reason I have not had sex yet in my lifetime with a woman yet is because the whole time I have been shy. Kept down with the personal fear of nearly every woman I see being already paired up with a boyfriend, I am not a man who likes confrontations with the guy who has spoken for the woman I'm eyeing over. And during my high school years, I was naive on the subject of dating. Bring in dating education classes and run them alongside or before sexual education. And make dating education equally mandatory. It had not dawned on me that I needed to be dating until after I had turned 21 years old, during my third year attending Piedmont, Virginia Community College. And my Rose Chew and Sonic Chew comic pages, again, I understand, each individual person has their own perception of things, but contrary to the individual perceptions among some people, the comics, drawings, and all words all had no meaning of anything homosexual whatsoever. I personally, in real life and in the comic pages, and all that promote being straight. No question or shadow of a doubt. All those who have mean wrongfully misunderstood parts of all the comic pages and all that of such. I, all my Sonic Chews and Rose Chews and citizens of Quickville, Virginia, do not appreciate at all being wrongfully labelled as homosexuals. 
It really infuriates me, Sonichu, Roshu, and everybody else. I have also heard of my Sonichu being written in college essays that promote homosexuality, and even worse, promoting him in the gay pride parades. Wrong labels, stop writing or promoting me or my characters as such. All Sonichus are straight, all Roshus are straight, I am straight, my comics are straight comics, I, Sonichu and Roshu, we never want to be part of any and all homosexual promoting papers or events, because with every item that is created from not of my own hands that even inklings such wrongful labelings upon me, Sonichu, Roshu and all my straight characters, we are all being disrespected. We will never take the misunderstandings, mislabelings and all that like sitting down. I personally would rather have a painful gender change operation than ever turn homosexual. So to reiterate, I and 96% of all characters and are all straight. Never ever call me, my comics or any of my straight characters gay. Sigh. And to conclude, while I personally do not care about the homosexual lifestyle that's swift, and I personally respect each individual homosexual person as an individual human beings, the main thing that really infuriates me is being called gay. Do not ever call me gay or ever question my sexual orientation. I, Christopher Christian Ricardo Weston Chandler, am straight, period. Thank you. Or, in short, uh, what Chris really could have just said is, well, this. Please stop calling me gay. I touched a willy in high school once and it was just a little mistake. So please stop calling me gay. I swear I love vagina and I love to touch that pussy. I kissed two girls before, and it felt really good, because they were women and not men. Because I'm not gay, penises are for fag- Well, yeah, you get the idea. On the 12th of January 2010, Chris again appeared to soften his stance, saying that I am decreasing the homosexuals will have equal relationship rights within Quickville. However, in the same breath, Chris clarified, gay marriage is still illegal and wrong. Oh, it's wrong, apparently. Well, um, and Magic Chan will stay out of those uh, people's heads under my request. The reason why gay marriage isn't an equal relationship, right, is not readily apparent. Defences against becoming a homo. It's hard work for a warrior of true love and honesty to stay straight. Chris used many strange and totemic objects, from a poster of Sailor Moon to his Optimus Prime toy, to aggressively asserting his straightness. Chris has said that he star starred as... His Sailor Moon poster, he stared at his Sailor Moon poster every day to stave off temptations of homosexuality. I'm pretty sure this was something that was literally straight up lifted from the Simpsons episode Homer's Phobia. Interesting that, isn't it? The certified poster of Marge Simpsons Playboy edition was enough of Chris's many defences against becoming a homo. The fact that she is a married cartoon character does not seem to have dissuaded him. Chris also subscribed to Playboy to help keep himself straight. You could tell he's straight because when he's explaining what he finds attractive in women, it only takes five seconds for him to get around to breasts and china. Points for consistency, I suppose. When homosexual or potentially homosexual fans sent him Chris, quest, sent Chris questions on the Wikipedia, asking for tips to stay straight, Chris tended to suggest what essentially amounts to self-brainwashing. Some of his ideas included thinking of naked women and how awesome they are, and imagining being struck by painful lightning whenever a homosexual thought occurs. He also clarified that one needs not buy a Sailor Moon poster in particular, but any poster featuring attractive women, preferably in bikinis and looking sexy. Will do the trick. He believes these rituals, as he calls them, are necessary to maintain st a st sexual attraction to women. 
Chris has also encouraged women to not drink, smoke, or be physically abused while pregnant, as this could cause the baby to be born homosexual. I'm wrapping this up. As if homosexuality is like fetal alcohol syndrome. Chris is also convinced that his chances of becoming homosexual have been raised because he did not engage in heterosexual intercourse before m maturation. Spoiler alert, Chris has never matured. Hence, hence his oft-stated regret that he did not get dating education classes in high school, and his recommendation that they be made available for the youth of today. Considering the myriad of habits Chris has cultivated, which are highly atypical for a straight male, it seems certain that he has been at the very least sexually confused. He is demonstrably very aggressive and insecure about it. Lesbianism Whereas Chris's discomfort with homosexual males has been fairly consistent, his views on lesbianism have wildly facilitated. In Chris's Carrie ripoff, The High School Story, his Mary Sue character, Tara Leanne Yarman, is ridiculed and accused of being a lesbian by kids at a high school because she hands around with male friends. As the work serves as a backstory to the villainous uh, private villa of corrupted citizens, Tara's bullying may have served as a fictional inverse parallel to the endless accusations of homosexuality lodged by Chris's detractors. Illustrating Chris's worldview of implied homosexuality as an insult. She felt angry when she heard lesbian when called that she would leave the bully by intimidating Glare with a purple glow from her green eyes. Then soon after, a strong straight homophobe would attack that bully with no mercy, beat the crap out of that person. That's apparently the high school. I've never even heard of the high school story. Maybe, is it any good? I have no idea. On the 25th of July 2009, Chris produced a rambling and nonsensical video to the tune of Avril Lavigne's Girlfriend. In the middle of the video, Chris sings about the importance of being straight and intersperses a stay straight caption on a photo of a lesbian couple split in two. Hey, hey well, yeah, yeah, you know, the, if you don't know the lyrics to Avril Lavigne's Girlfriend, well, well, here they are. I thought Avril Lavigne was a... Was, was, is, is a lesbian now, but I could be wrong about that. I, I have no idea. Later, Chris would gradually revise his former hardline attitude against lesbians. In Sonichu, Chris goes out of his way to state that the children of Sonichu and Rosechu are watched over by Heather Inglesias, whom he categorizes as a pretty trustworthy, good-natured Spanish lesbian. That was just felt like a lot of words in my mouth, to be honest. He further mentions that Heather keeps her sexuality a secret from the kids at the request of Sonichu himself. Chris may have shoehorned a lesbian character into Sonichu to appear more tolerant, but his attempt comes off as a half-hearted in light of his continual diversion of gay men and instant insistence that Heather hide her sexuality. You know... In a very, very ironic state of affairs, it's Chris unironically could have created an interesting uh, composition of drama if Sonichu was presented in this way by telling Heather not to stay true to herself and to keep things away from other people. Yes, of course, the context of her having to look after kids is one thing, and it's absolutely sure about that, but Arthur managed to do stuff like this, and bear in mind, that is that is the very least I will absolutely say is that Chris is better at handling stuff like this in this way, in some roundabout way, than happened in High Guardian Spice. Do you remember that show? Neither do I, because nobody wants to remember it. Let's move on. In Mumble Number 1, which took place on the last day of 2009, Chris declared his support for lesbians and uh, reiterated his uh, simultaneous hatred for gay men stating that he hated jerks in general, and how typically a porn DVD helped to soften his view on lesbians. In effect, Chris claimed that he supports lesbians because he believes women are beautiful and hates gay men because men are icky. Ugh, pretty much, but it's like, you know, between lesbians, it's like a partial discourage, but then it's, but then again, but then between guys, instead, I would have definitely 100% discourage. In my humble opinion, I've uh, talked to others before with uh, Sarah, my uh, Sarah, my girlfriend. 
I cannot be willing to do a threesome with two women, but def definitely never with two guys. Well, Mumble was right, because Chris literally... Could Chris, like, form a proper sentence in this? Proof that he must have been lying. Yes, ye yes, they are. Yes, they're, they're some of the most beautiful. They're more beautiful, yet, like, y y you know, true, true works of art in their own way. Just like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, you know, the status of, yeah, they were in the past. Fuck me, that was painful to read. On the 28th of March 2013, Chris posted a public Facebook message whining about repeat media coverage of the Supreme Court's Proposition 8 and DOMA deliberations. In it, he reiterated his support for lesbians and his disapproval of the damn homosexual males. By the 14th of August 2014, Chris's transgender status had proceeded to coming out as a lesbian identified male in his coming out poster. He posted a picture of himself holding an LGBT flag, but stated that I support the LBT fully. The G, gay, or may, males are fortunate to be on this boat. I'm glad to say that actually from the comments I've received from people who are gay, who've commented on my videos before, and they say they don't accept Chris, I don't blame them. Because if I was a member as well, I literally would not be interested whatsoever. I know that some people don't uh, from the the community don't accept like Katy Perry anymore or for, for something like that, but I would have chosen Katy Perry long over Chris. That's that's just my suggestion. On the thirty first of October, twenty fourteen, Chris spent that Halloween at a gay bar dressed as a groovy seventies lesbian, further evidencing his apparent acceptance of homosexuality. In that visiting a gay bar was the thing Chris had specified on multiple occasions in the past that he would never do in his life. Through 2017, Chris expressed his interest in media ripe with lesbian implications, hinting at the point to which he fantasizes himself in the act. Prior to his relationship with Jessica Quinn, Chris complained on his loneliness, of his loneliness by comparing himself to Life is Strange lesbian uh, uh, deutagorist Chloe Price. Shifting in stance. Not long after coming out as a male lesbian, Chris felt deeply uncomfortable with being perceived as gay or homo, and in Facebook statements attempted to exclude gay men from his crusade for gender equality, no doubt under the influence of his new sweetheart Catherine and other gal pals. Fuck me, that was that scared the shit out of me. Chris retracted these clumsy statements, apologising for the umpteenth time. I am accepting of the gays as people, uh, blah, blah, blah. All that, all of this d surprisingly redeemable, well, okay. I am accepting the gays as people just like m most any individual person. Seriously, you are all proud of who you are. All I ask is not to find any reason to feel anger towards anyone of any orientation, race, or whatever. Based on their individual actions or offense as an individual person or self. Also, please disregard all of my past and way past thoughts of turning gay straight. That was very wrong of me. I am very sorry about that and continue to be true and proud of yourselves of who you are. As I am very proud of myself for being a lesbian transgender, a female lesbian soul trapped in a male body. Now, you may argue that's actually quite uh, redeemable and Chris does, it does come across that it wasn't really done with any like, uh hidden motives whatsoever but one thing i will just straight up say i suppose in regards to all this is that chris can say that he's accepting of it but whether or not this is something that chris actually believes is another you know saying and doing are two very separate things but outside of all of this uh, vitriol does chris it's people are fully aware that there are other reasons why chris is you generally disliked and which we've covered many many times he also announced his support for the human rights campaign going so as far as to say that homophobics are none other than the cyber bullies and internet trolls who put hate on the innocent around the world young and old some of which even put pressure on to force you into being something you know you are fully not interestingly his prior notion that all trolls are homose and hom are homo homosexuals have been completely reversed to the idea that they are all homophobes illustrating that chris still believes that any detractor of his 
uh, on of his is part of an organised movement and has personal flaws. However, if the past is any judge, the end of his relationship with Catherine has no doubt caused his homophobia to resurface. He confirmed in late 2014 that despite the fact that the comic uh, Chris shares his new gender identity, Rentnark has his opposite is still an evil, violent homo. On the 26th of June 2015, the Supreme Court upheld the uh, constitutional reality uh, of gay marriage. Chris, shockingly enough, reacted very positively towards this. Congratulations to all of us on the nationwide marriage equality. If a holiday be made on June 26, 2015, how about Pride Dependence Day? Now I am still requiring as my sweetheart to be my future wife as a lesbian trans woman. I do feel I am compatible with any woman. Not really, Chris. And no, I am not mistaken. Well, kind of. I have been genuinely feeling and identifying like a woman for about my whole lifetime. I could never appreciate the male's Neanderthalian interests, and I feel more appreciative and comprehending of fashions, makeup, shopping, empathy, identifying feelings and looking to resolve problems reasonably. Plus, I have a great deal of self-control. Fuck off, Chris, you don't. And I can bring good and pleasant tidings to all women partly. Love wins, one family, LGBTQ, pride dependence, pride. It's, again, it's kind of almost unbelievable the idea that Chris goes from saying that uh, gay men are all enemies, whether they have anything to do with Chris whatsoever, to the idea that women are more appreciative and comprehending and with things like empathy and looking to resolve problems reasonably, as if men couldn't do any of these things either. So Chris is just a fucking idiot. That's 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 not that's not new, but it's the the fact that we go from like almost one extreme to kind of the other. Well, not honestly, but it, there's a lot of it. On Octo in the October 2015, Chris released a video in which he apologises for his past homophobic statements and iterates that he is now supportive of male homosexuals, while still drilling the same points that Sonichu and Rosechu are straight. He almost simultaneously retconned Sonichu issue 10 and replaced the fictional gay epidemic with a bizarre Nazi zombie premise, which still has homophobic implications given the context of the comic. As of April 2021, Chris seems comfortable enough identifying as bisexual that he feels that he can casually use the terms, well I'm not saying those, to describe other people, but not himself. Thinking that the slurs are words that the LGBT plus community universally wants to reclaim. In reality, such a position is a point of controversial debate in the community and the way Chris used the term was predictably met with backlash for being careless, tone-deaf, and potentially hurtful. But, of course, as you might suspect, why would Chris in any way, shape, or form do anything that would make him look stupid and bad? And that, ladies and gentlemen, was, well, a lot to take in. I I'm, I'm just be honest as well. So... We've we've sort of covered at least uh, both for for gay men and lesbians as well, and then we've also got like these three to go over as well, and well, Chris's stances on well men, women, a lot of other things as well are gonna like go into this. We've also covered like transgenderism as well, but there's gonna be a lot more things to cover in the coming weeks because we are like far from done with this. So. I thank all of you guys for watching this, and I cannot wait to see all of you guys again in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye for now.